another Photoshop tutorial from tutorvid.com. This tutorial is going to show you how to test out putting a picture on a wall in a room from a picture you have from before. Now it seems like it would be a simple task but getting the perspective correct it becomes a little bit tricky. So the first thing we have to do is lay a grid over our wall to get the perspective correct. So to get our grid uh, there's a few steps involved and so just follow along. Go to file and new and we're going to make this is going to be one square in our grid that's going to be 100 pixels by 100 pixels and background make sure you put that as transparent and then OK and now this is going to be one grid square so we'll click control A to select all and then edit stroke and then stroke it one pixel on the inside and color of black now we're going to turn this into a pattern. So edit, define pattern, and we can call it transparent grid. Now when we go back, so now we have to put the grid on this image. And to do that, we need first a new layer. So go down here and click new layer. And now we want to fill this layer with the grid. So shift backspace, and that gives us the options of how to fill it. It'll probably look like this when you do it first. Uh, go down and click Pattern, and then Custom Pattern, and yours is probably the last one here. And then OK. So we have our grid over top, and it's on a separate layer. So the first thing we want to do is get this to the same perspective as our wall. So press Control T, and bring down the size of the grid. And now we want to transform it a little bit so go down to distort and you can put one of these nodes on each corner of the wall so that it lines up with the perspective when you have it pretty close click OK and then go get your new picture so this is the picture I'm going to use so to get it in the other image I press control A to select it all or up to go to select all and then copy Edit, copy, or control C, and back to your other image. Edit and paste, or control V. Now you can see that this image layer is too big, so we're going to have to scale it down, and we're also going to have to warp it. And a good thing to do if you're going to be changing the size and reducing it is turn it into a smart object so that it keeps its resolution even if you reduce the size. If you don't, I'm not sure how smart objects work, check out a tutorial on those. You can see that it's a smart object when it has this little picture on it. And we're going to want it below layer 1, so you just drag it and drop it below. Now we're going to do the same thing as we did with the grid. Control T for transform. Grab the corner and make sure you press the shift. If you don't press the shift, you're going to be able to totally distort your image. And that's not what we want, so make sure you hold the shift key down and then it keeps the shape of the image, height and width in respect to each other. So bring it over to your wall and you can zoom in with control and plus key. And now the reason we needed this grid here is because if it's at the top I'll start transforming it first. So right click on the image and then click distort. Now we can grab these corners and move them around. You can hold down the shift again and that'll keep your sides straight. And now the reason we needed the grid on here is because if the image was a lot smaller and the top was in the middle of the page, you can see how off the perspective would have been if we had chosen this angle. But if we hang it up this high, you can see the angle has to be at this shape and the bottom is at a different angle because it's a different distance from the floor. So the grid is quite important. So when you have it aligned with the grid and the size you want it, you can press OK. And then you can hide your grid. And check out how it looks. And maybe the final touch is to put a frame around the image. So to do that, press Control and click your layer. And that should select it uh, right on the edge. And then we're going to create a new layer to put our frame on. And then we're going to stroke. And depending on the resolution of your image, this width of the stroke will vary, but I'm going to keep it at 10. 
and the color you can pick whichever color frame you want and we'll put it on the center uh, blending mode normal and then when you're done control D to deselect and there you have your picture with a frame and that's it check out more tutorials from tutorvid.com <laughs>